And a lot of people are talking about hollow points, a full metal jacket, 9 millimeter, 380, 38. This is a report that was done by the U.S. Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, on handgun wounding factors and effectiveness. I can get you a copy of this report if you want. I can email you it. But if you go through here and look at this report, it's by the FBI Training Academy uh, for Law Enforcement Dissemination Only, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is the um, hand wounding effectiveness. And I'm just going to kind of skip through some of the stuff here. You can see his uh, forward technical realities, blah, 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 blah. And we'll just skip through this. Um, okay. Uh, it says the selection of effective ammunition for law enforcement is critical and complex um, issue. Critical because of what is at stake. A handgun is primary weapon used in law enforcement. Okay. I'm skipping a lot here, okay? Tactical realities, okay? Tactical, the shot placement is an important and often cited consideration regarding the suitability of weapons and ammunition. However, considerations of caliber are equally important and cannot be ignored. Uh, for example, a bullet uh, through the central nervous system with any caliber is likely to incapacitate. Few, if any, and I'm going to go over here, you can see uh, how high the few of, okay, here. Few, if any, um, shooting instances will present the officer the opportunity to take careful, precisely aim. It means you're not going to get a precise aim. That's like uh, that's why you make the first shot count. Be accurate. Be good when what you fire. Uh, handgun is primary weapon for self-defense against unexpected attack. Uh, sometimes they're in managed circumstances. They are, uh, or you cannot get to your gun. Uh, there's penetration. Permanent cavity, temporary cavity, fragmentation. And I'm going to kind of skip a lot of this because a lot of this is just uh, talking about wounding and we kind of know that. Uh, all handgun wound, uh, wounds will combine components of penetration, permanent cavity, and temporary cavity to a greater or lesser degree. Fragmentation, on the other hand, does not reliably occur in handgun wounds due to the relatively low velocity of the bullets. Fragmentation occurs uh, in a, reliably in high velocity projectiles. With an excess of 2,000 feet per second, like in a 5.7 bullet. Since handgun velocities generally do not exceed 14 to 1,500 feet per second, reliable fragmentation could only be achieved by constructing a bullet special, like a frangible, as to eliminate any reasonable penetration. Unfortunately, such a bullet would break apart too fast to penetrate vital organs. The best option, they're saying, is glacier safety slug, a, pro a projectile designed to break up an impact. In most cases, some fragmentation has occurred in handgun wounds. The bullet fragments are generally found within one centimeter of the permanent cavity. The velocity of the pistol bullets, even new high velocity loads, is insufficient to cause shedding of the leg fragments as seen with rifle bullets. It is obviously any additional wounding effect caused by fragmentation as a handgun would be inconsequential. Of the remaining factors, temporary cavity is frequently and grossly overrated as the wounding factor when analyzing wounds. Nevertheless, historically has been used in some as a primary means of assessing, um, assessing the wound effectiveness of bullets. Okay, it says uh, they have a bunch of just standards here. They're showing, uh, you know, different... Uh, they're saying a lot of uh, the factors ignore penetration and permanent cavity. Since vital organs are located deep within the body, it should be obvious that to ignore penetration in permanent cavity is to ignore only the proven means of damaging and disrupting vital organs. Further, temporary cavity is caused by the tissue being stretched away from the permanent cavity not being destroyed. By definition, a cavity is a space. Um, frequently, forensic pathologists cannot distinguish the wound track caused by a hollow point, a large temp temporary cavity, from that caused by a solid bullet, a very small temporary cavity. There may be no physical difference in wounds. If there is no fragmentation, remote damage to the temporary cavitation may be minor. So read on, we'll see what they're getting to. In the case of low-velocity missile pistol bullets, the bullet produces a direct path of destruction and very little lateral extension within the surrounding tissue. Only a small temporary cavity is produced. To cause significant injuries to a structure, a pistol bullet must strike the structure directly. The amount of kinetic energy lost in a tissue by a pistol bullet is insufficient to cause 
uh, remote injur 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 injuries. And that's why they're talking about already ho hollow points when they're, they hit the tissue, they give up all their energy. So they have a less chance of uh, hitting a vital organ because they are dissipating all their energy. Whereas a full metal jacket will go further, break a bone, and maybe maybe not as a big wound cavity, but it could penetrate a, a, a vessel or a blood vessel or a lung or a heart. The reason that most tissue in the human target is elastic, that's why. So temporary cavitation uh, is only temporary. It goes back out and come, you know, it fills back in. Muscle tissue are capable of substantial stretching with minimal damage. Studies have shown that outward velocity of the tissues in which the temporary cavity forms is no more than one-tenth of the velocity of the projectile. So they're saying over here, tissue disruption caused by handgun bullet is limited to two mechanisms. First, crush mechanism, uh, and the second, the stretch mechanism. Here, we go back here. Oh, get, get, get back here. With exceptions of hits of the brain and the upper cord, reliable and reproducible immediate incapacitation by gunshot wounds is a myth. Human target is complex. In fact, psychological, physiological factors may actually play a relatively minor role in achieving rapid incapacitation. So get to the point. I just want to get to the point of the bullets. Uh, okay. The knock down power, you can, uh, let's see. A bullet simply cannot knock down a man. If it had the energy to do so, then the equal would be applied against the shooter, and he would be knocked down too. Uh, it says the human target is, can only be reliably incapacitated only by disrupting or destroying the brain or upper spinal cord. That's the only way you can totally incapacitate. Okay, we go here. Okay, here we go. Ammunition selection criteria. And this is what everybody should probably pay attention to. Critical willing components for handgun ammunition in order to importance are penetration, and permanent cavity. Do you see that? Those are the main uh, when you're selecting ammunition for a gun. The bullet must penetrate sufficiently to pass through the vital organs. Okay, I'm, I'm going to underline it here. And this is not me talking. This is the FBI. The bullet must penetrate sufficiently to pass through vital organs and be able to do so from less than optimal angles. Uh, for example, a shot from the side through the arm must penetrate at least 10 to 12 inches to pass through the heart. A bullet fired from through the abdomen must penetrate seven inches in a slender adult to reach a major blood vessels in the back of the abdomen. Penetration must be sufficiently deep to reach and pass through vital organs and permanent cavity must be large enough to maximize tissue destruction. Several design approaches have been made in handgun ammunition where it's intended to increase the, increase the wounding effectiveness. Most notable is the hollow, boy, the hollow point bullet designed to expand on impact. Expansion accomplishes several, several things. Positive side increases the frontal area of the bullet and thereby increases the amount of the tissue. On the negative side, expansion limits penetration. It can prevent a bullet from penetrating vital organs, especially if the projectile is in a relatively light mass and the penetration must be through several inches of fat, muscle, or clothing. Increased, right here, increased, well, let's get here to, increased bullet mass will increase penetration. Increased velocity will increase penetration, but only until the bullet begins to deform, at which point increased velocity decreases penetration. Permanent cavity can be increased by the use of expanding bullets or larger diameter bullets like a 45 ACP 230 grain full of metal jacket, which have adequate penetration. However, in no case should the selection of the bullet, and this is mo most important right here, I want you to Read that. However, in no case should selection of a bullet be made where expansion is necessary to achieve the desired performance. Uh, handgun bullets expand at the target only 60 to 7 percent of 60 to 70 percent of the time. Best damage to hollow point bullets by hitting bone, glass, or other inadvertent obstacles and prevent expansion. Clothing fibers can wrap the nose of the bullet in a cocoon-like manner and prevent expansion. Insufficient impact velocity caused by short barrel or a longer range will prevent uh, expansion as with simple manufacturing variations. Now this is not me talking, this is the FBI. Okay, it is essential to bear in mind the, the single most critical, read this, okay, the single most critical, it is essential to bear in mind the single most critical factor remains penetration. Okay, 
And it says, while penetrations up to 18 inches is preferable, a handgun bullet must pass reliably through 12 inches of soft tissue minimum, regardless what it expands or not. If the bullet does not reliably penetrate this dust, uh, it is not an effective bullet for law enforcement use. Given adequate uh, penetration, a larger bullet diameter will have the edge in wounding effectiveness. It will damage blood vessels and smaller uh, par uh, particles barely, uh, projectiles barely misses. The larger permanent cavity may lead to faster blood loss. Although such an edge, an edge clearly exists, its significance cannot be quantified. An issue that must be addressed is the fear of overpenetration. This is another myth over here, guys. An issue that must be addressed is the fear of overpenetration, widely expressed on part of law enforcement. The concern, okay, the concern, I'm going to underline this for you guys here. here. The concern that a bullet would pass through the body of a subject and injure an insolent bystander is clearly exaggerated. Any review of law enforcement shootings will reveal that the great majority of shots fired by officers do not hit any subjects at all. It should be obvious that the relatively few shots that do hit a subject are now somehow more dangerous to bystanders than the shots that miss the subjects entirely. Also, a bullet that completely penetrates a subject will give up a great deal of energy doing so. The skin on the exit side of the body is tough and flexible. Experiments have shown that it has the same resistance to bullet passage as approximately four inches of muscle tissue. Choosing a right here, okay there. Choosing a bullet because of relatively shallow penetration will seriously compromise weapon effectiveness. The needlessly endanger the lives of law enforcement of officers using it. No law enforcement officer has ever lost his life because a bullet overpenetrate his adversary. And virtually none have ever been sued for hitting an incident bystander through an adversary. On the other hand, tragically, a large number of officers have been killed because their bullets did not penetrate deeply enough. So, bottom line, you know, you're, you're seeing in here, and it's, it's, it's telling you others, um, you know, if you, you just, you know, uh, pause it and you can read most of this. Um, there's another one. Further, it appears that many people are predisposed to, predisposed to fall down when shot. This phenomenon is the ind independent of caliber bullet or hit location. It is beyond the control of the shooter. It can only be proven in act, not predicted. Lacking either one, people are not predisposed to fall down, given this person. The choice of caliber and bullet is essentially irrelevant. People largely fall down when shot and apparent uh, when you like get them in a nervous uh, system or something like that. Okay, let's go here, and this is pretty interesting, and we'll go here. Let's read this uh, right up here. Factors governing incapacitation of human target many are variable. The actual destruction caused by any small arms particle projectile is too small to, in magnitude relative to the mass and complexity of the target. If a bullet destroys two inches of tissue in its passage through the body, that resembles 0.07 of 1% of the mass of a 180-pound man. Unless the tissue destroyed is located within critical areas of the nervous system, it is physiological insufficient to force incapacitation upon an unwilling target. So it is saying bigger bullets are better all the way down this article. I don't I don't make it, and um, I'll give you an example here. Here's an example. Uh, I'm going to ask something else. It says, to judge a caliber's effectiveness, consider how many people hit with it failed to fall down and look at where they were hit. Of the successes of failures, analyze how many were hit in vital organs rather than how many were killed or not and correlate that with the uh, uh, um, account of exactly what they did when they were hit. Did they fall down? Did they stay up? Um, any shooting incidents, the differences between bullets may be small, but science can give us the means of identifying the difference. I'm just okay. Here we go. Here we go. Physiologically, no caliber of bullet is certain to incapacitate any individual unless it hit the brain. 
Psychologically, some individuals can be incapacitated by minor or small caliber wounds. These indi individuals who are submitted by fear, adrenaline, alcohol, or drugs will, will and survival determination not, we may not be incapacitated if mortally wounded. The will to survive to fight despite horrific damage to the body is commonplace on the battlefield. Kinetic energy does not wound, okay? Temporary cavity does not wound. The much discussed shock of a bullet is a fable and the knockdown power is a myth. The critical em ele element is penetration. The bullet must pass through a large blood bearing organs and be sufficient diameter to promote rapid bleeding. Penetration less than 12 inches is too little. In, in the words of the two of the participants of the 1987 wound ballistics workshop, too little per penetration will get you killed. Given desirable and reliable penetration, the only way to increase bullet effectiveness is to decrease the severity of the wound by increasing the size of the hole made by the bullet. Any bullet will not penetrate through vital organs from less than optimal angle is not acceptable. Of those that will penetrate, the edge is always with the bigger bullet. Okay, guys, did you get that? The edge is always with the bigger bullet. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of put this right here. You know, it says the edge is always with the bigger bullet. And this is not me. This is the, you know, this is the FBI uh, saying it, and it's not me. And right here, edges, if I can. The edge is always with the bigger bullet. So thanks a lot, guys. And this is the FBI declassified report. And I hope this has actually brought a little information into what I'm trying to disseminate to uh, people that are, you know, carrying guns or using guns for defensive. Uh, a lot of people may conf find conflict with this, but it's just a bottom line, you know. Uh, and there's many good hollow points around. I'm just saying a full metal jack bullet will penetrate deeper.